Hello friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May and this is a channel about cross stitch. You can find more information about me and my designs at artistdesign.com and you can follow me on Instagram and all the things. This is this is Luna Moon. She is my little pug wonder. And as soon as I sit down to film a video, my pugs always want to come and participate. <laughs> so there may or may not be some shenanigans, let me just say. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, I'm so happy that you came back to join me this week. We are going to talk about counted cross stitch. My love, dare I say obsession, with <laughs> stitching with floss, fiber, thread, all the things. <laughs> I am, oh my gosh, there's so much to report this week. And so what I'm gonna do uh, my whips, which are my works in progress. I'm gonna show you my comfort lighthouse that I actually framed, an update on my newest release, my red sampler. And then at the very end, I will do some upon request things like share my wedding photo <laughs> that you all asked to see. Well, not all, but several. <laughs> So let's get started. We'll start with my big thank you for the week. And that is, you want to help me here, girl? Uh, my sampler, Count the Cups, a petite red sampler. I would like to give a huge shout out to two floss tube channels. First and foremost, Brenda and the Serial Starter, Brenda and Laura. Thank you both so much for your tremendous shout out about my red sampler and you two inspired me to create my very first ever red sampler and to now I am working on a second one in the series. Yes, a second sampler. <laughs> I am so excited. It will also be a red sampler and I cannot wait. I have been working on it all week. Oh my gosh, I what is that what's the phrase? When the muse calls the artist has to jump. <laughs> Oh, I'm scaring the dog. All right. So I want to thank Brenda and the Serial Starter. I will have their channel linked down below. I would also like to thank Michelle of Bendy Stitchy for your tremendous shout out of my new design as well. I see you and I appreciate you. And for everyone else, if I didn't mention you, I am sorry I didn't catch your videos. Please know that I, I love and appreciate all of you. Here it is. Oh, it's stitched on Silk Weaver 32 count. Midas Touch Wexford Linen, and I used Cayenne. It's the Weeks Dye Works Cayenne, the 2259. I talked to one of the wonderful people at Weeks, and they said they're actually out of Cayenne because the demand is so high. <laughs> so y'all love Cayenne. And well, that was before I even released this pattern. Uh, you stitch it on whatever red you feel comfortable with, whatever fabrics that you have. This, we are living in a very interesting time. There are fabric sh shortages, flash shortages, no fault to the companies, but things are, we are all in uncharted territory right now. And so give yourself all some grace, the company is some grace, pick your favorite color or your second favorite color <laughs> and go from there. I mean, work with what we've got. So that is my thank you for that. Oh my, my little pug, she's like, just keep petting me. Don't stop talking and just love me. I know, I know. She is a little love bug. She just loves to cuddle. All right, do you want to help show some more stuff? Okay. Let me show, I framed this next piece. This is Comfort Lighthouse by Carriage House Samplings. And I absolutely love this piece following Brenda and Laura their rule of always being stitching with a red sampler. I feel like I need to invoke a clause of one must always be stitching on a Kathy Barrick affiliated piece. Yes, I realized that I have a lot of carriage house samplings, Kathy Barrick. Um, I have Liz Matthews. Uh, hello from Liz Matthews. She designed under the name Elizabeth's Garden back in the day. I have her a uh, couple of her original, her flack, Fractor Bird and her Nantucket sampler. And so I feel like 
you know, with the two degrees of Barbara Anna or the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, there should be a one degree in my house of Kathy Barrick. <laughs> so I am invoking a rule for myself that I must always be stitching on a Kathy Barrick affiliated piece. That being said, here is my Comfort Lighthouse. I love it. This is actually a frame that I got at a thrift store and it was just a frame. You can see there's some like little bit of markings when I hold it right to the light. It didn't have glass. It was actually just the frame like, ah. And so I did do the backing. I, I added, not the best, but I added uh, acid-free scrapbook paper to the back. And I do need to add the hanging pieces, the hardware where you put the metal and then the silver attachment. I was going to do a saw hook or the saw hook attachment. And I thought, no, I'll do the wire instead. It's <laughs> so I love it. I stretched it. I used some of the sticky tape, the stitchery tape. I got it. I got it online. It was about $15 for the roll of it. And so I added like my corner, my miter corners. Farm girl, Michelle, did a tutorial on how she uses sticky, the double-sided stitchery tape. So I felt more comfortable using it versus pinning my piece, which pinning of course is awesome. But I wanted to just get this framed and ready for my nautical wall. So uh, there it is. I did iron and press it. I did use the best press starch. I was very concerned about using it because I've heard that any type of moisture on an R&R &R reproductions fabric can cause the fabric to bleed because they do a coffee tea stain proprietary dye to their fabrics. So I, from a distance, I did lightly spray the best press on the back, not on the front of the stitches, but on the back. And then I ironed it with the hot dry iron, no steam. And then I affixed on the back here, I did the Pellon 44F interfacing. That is the interfacing that Vonna Pfeiffer of the Twisted Stitcher recommends for her light interfacing for several of her finishing tutorials. I really have to thank Vonna for telling me about interfacing and using it. It really helps me. I feel like my stitching in the back is supported better. Once you've cut, you want to make sure you've ironed, you've pressed it, you've cut away all your stray little, little threads so you don't see them pop through, but I feel like it really adds a stability and a dimension to it, even when you're framing. I did the I did where I did not put the interfacing all the way to the edge of the fabric the, that I pull over. I did it just in the design area and it worked so much better. I, I'm just so happy. I stitched this. I used all silky threads, the 12 weight cotton. So one strand over two linen threads. So and this is a 36 count sea fog by r, &R Reproductions Fabrics. And again... This is designed by Kathy Barrick, but it's under the company Carriage House Samplings. And the affiliation is her sister purchased this company from Kathy. So if you're going to follow the rule of a Barrick affiliated stitch, <laughs> you have Elizabeth Garden. Hello from, from Liz Matthews. You have Carriage House Samplings and Kathy Barrick. Now, Kathy, if I have missed one, you go ahead and let me know down below. <laughs> Not that you watch my channel, but if I've missed something there, please let me know. <laughs> so there we go. Oh my gosh, almost 10 minutes in. Can you tell how much I love this piece? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It has all the things. My, I want to say it's fully finished object, my FFO, but I haven't put that hanging rod in the back. Tip that I learned about scrapbook paper on the back of your finished pieces when I entered my pieces last year into the Maryland State Fair, one of the rules is all framed pieces had to be covered the backing with 
paper, but I assumed it meant the brown framing paper that most, you know, the brown, no, as long as it was covered with paper. So they suggested the scrapbook paper because it's acid free. Amazing. And again, they used, they wanted the backs covered because they used the, the grates, the black wire grating. And so when you have your piece from the back, you don't want to see it all. You want it to be covered. So they actually recommended scrapbook paper. So isn't that fun? I know all, all fairs have different rules and it'll be interesting to see what happens this year for the 2020 county, state, and national fair season here in the United States. Uh, Yellow House Crafts Nellie, she just started making videos again, but she was the first ever floss tuber I watched two years ago, three years ago, who entered her pieces into her fair and who inspired me to therefore enter my pieces into the fair. So thank you. And just, just know that whether you're a viewer or you're a floss tube video maker, that I appreciate you. And I learned so much from all of you. <laughs> so thank you. All right. What are we going to talk about next? Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. Last week, I kind of lamented that I don't have a whole lot of fabric choices. I'm thinking about dyeing some of my Ada to use because I want to start all the things. Hashtag start all the things. But I was lamenting that I don't have enough fabric. And so I went through and I really took a hard look at my fabric and realized I had fabric. They were tied up in other projects. For example, Fond Hearts. This is the original pattern, but it has been reissued recently. This is the Fond Hearts um, by Maggie Bononamish, American folk artist. I realized I had my entire piece of color and cotton, 1776 Belfast 32 count linen, the whole piece in for this tiny little project. So what I did, was I went ahead and made sure I had a three, oh, that's the back. Ma went ahead and made sure I had a three inch margin all the way around. I cut out the piece as I should have from the beginning. I so I sewed around all the edges, put the piece back. So now I have pieces. I do not have a serger, but what I did and it worked, I feel it worked really well. I don't know if I can get a close up here to show you. So I don't have a serger, but what I do is I do a zigzag stitch and I very carefully, I would say that's less than a quarter of an inch. I would say an eighth of an inch. I fold it over just enough for the foot of my sewing machine to make that zigzag and catch that bottom lip of the fabric. Again, I do not have a serger. Would I love one? Yes, I would, <laughs> but that's not in the cards for me right now. So I did serge all around. The, serging your fabric or sewing around helps to de decrease the amount of linen fiber loss because the way it's woven, as these pieces come unraveled, you can, you can lose your inches, yardage, millimeters you can lose that margin of your stitching area and plus then you've got strands everywhere and you've paid good money for your piece of fabric so you want to kind of try your best to keep it together I know some people on Ada use like a fray check some people uh in the past used the masking tape I don't use the masking tape and there's been there's controversy <laughs> controversy about whether or not to use that so I'm not I'm not saying anything about tape, but if you want to keep your edges, that's just an idea if you don't have a serger. So I did, I, 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 I worked on this piece. I added two of the leaves here and I'm starting to add in, I need to do my one over one right here to finish off the phrase. I am using, and I feel so fortunate. I cannot believe this. I have a felt grip hoop and I have one and a duchess hoop so I feel all fancy these are the vintage ones and it's got the felt 
Oh my gosh, I love it. Now I, I understand all of you seasoned and knowledgeable needle workers who talked about those. Now I understand. I am doing the words um, with just the one strand over one using in the hoop. For the most part, I do stitch in hand, but for one over one, I pull out my little hoop. I'm using a combination of Victorian Mato. The, um, this week's, it's like a brown 1272. And then I grabbed, for my greens, I had been hemming and hawing about my greens for six months or so. And finally, I decided, so the green I used uh, variegated initially, and then for the solid block green, I decided not to go with a variegated. I decided to use this color. And this one is uh, 630, and this one is 4019. And the variegated ones are called blendables. And I really enjoy them, the little spools. They also come in larger spools. All the things. Oh, I have a fun stuff to talk to you about Sulky at the end of the video if you want to wait and hear about stuff. <laughs> All the stuff, right? So there's my little piece. I love it. Again, the pattern has been reissued or reprinted. So you can, I think you can find it. I think it's under, I think it's, it's affordable um, cost-wise. I worked on just a little bit, just just a hair. I worked on my skeleton crew. This is the first ever big, awesome project. That's what I call a bap. Big and awesome because I am body positive and I am pattern positive. So there we go. I love this piece. I purchased this pattern at Dying to Stitch, the first ever needlework shop I ever stepped foot in. And I say that now I grew up going to Hancock's Fabrics, Joanne's Fabrics, the big box store, you know, I'm not talking about quilting stores. I'm talking about cross stitch from floor to ceiling and the pretty little stitches all on 40 count. I am stitching this on cauldron and I need a paper and I, oh my gosh, I love it. So I've got the first, I started in the center with this and now I have just a little like a of, of the brown to do and then I'm moving right into the pumpkin. I am done with white stitches, which, but I feel like they look pretty good because I'm doing them one over, one over two on, <laughs> <laughs> this fabric, but it, I'm, I'm, I have a, a complete sulky conversion. I am not sponsored by them, by the way. This video is all my own opinion, I swear. Uh, but I made a, a sulky color conversion. It's it's my handwritten notes. You can you can grab a copy. I have it available for free if you want my complete conversion that I used. So I'm getting to the right here in the center. I'm getting to this pumpkin right here and I cannot wait to start that pumpkin. As many of you know, my new orange that I love is the jack-o'-lantern color and cotton jack-o'-lantern. I used it to design my Be Well and Stitch uh, spring boobies bell pole that's over here. I feel there will always be a place in my heart for my number two, but it's really my number one, gentle art fragrant cloves <laughs> and orange marmalade follows close second. That's also a gentle art. Can you tell I love orange? Orange you glad we're talking about floss. All right. So I got to do that pumpkin jack-o'-lantern. I've got the two men. I am doing, so this is the 1071 and this is the 1001. So this is like the bright white, the equivalent of like the B5200. And this is like the ecru for a frame of reference. I love this uh, fabric. I, it's picture this plus cauldron. I I want to say that's correct. <laughs> uh, I But I love it. It's a big project. My husband actually picked it out, which is funny because I had wanted to do it way before he saw it. And he saw it. He's like, I like that one. So I need to get it done. It needs to happen. 
I worked on, oh, I'm so proud of this one. Okay. This is Cottage Garden Samplings Autumn Dream. This is my, I'm showing you the working copy picture because the other one is under the plastic and it's hard to see. There's a whole series of these birds. I want to say she did 12 of them. There might be a baker's dozen 13. I apologize for not remembering, but this is the number 11 in the series dream with a, there it is, pumpkin. I am doing the entire thing in the call for DMC. The fabric that I am using, I purchased, it's the toasted almond linen. I got this at the stitching post. They did not have the call for linen, which is totally fine. This one has been lovely. Toasted almond and it's Zweigart Belfast. And oh my gosh, I am so excited for this. I went ahead and since I had my sewing machine out, I went ahead and zigzagged all these corners, particularly because my margin right here is really close for comfort. I measured and measured again, and we talked about this at the shop, if I, if I had enough margin, because I got a bunch of fabric on both sides, but I was really concerned. And this is an equidistant pattern. It's 159 by 159. I. I'm not sure how this will be finished, but I don't have to worry now about the edges coming unraveled because I did zigzag and fold over. Again, all they called for DMC. I absolutely love this piece. So it looks like I just need to add, uh, I need to finish the bird. This, it says dream right here. And then I've got a couple other leaves and uh, clusters to finish. I would love to have this done by autumn to have it up and displayed. Fingers crossed the stars align and that can happen. Again, really love it. I have it in my autumn bag that I got. Um, I sent my, my custom, this is my custom fabric that I had um, printed. I, uh, this is my custom fabric that got made into a project bag and uh, by Stars Hollow Stitchery. And I love it. So these, based on my award-winning Boo Bees Apiary design. So again, can you see, I feel like my theme, I thought the theme for this, for this episode was gonna be orange or was gonna be red for my new red sampler, but I, it might be orange. Orange should glad you tuned in for Amanda May. Sorry, I laugh at myself. If I don't laugh, who will, right? Okay, oh my gosh. My last piece that I worked on, yes, yes. Everything's everywhere and I the pugs, I have to strategically place things so pugs don't pounce on them. Okay, the last thing I have to show you is my bouquet of sunshine. I am stitching just the center motif. This is what the whole sampler looks like. At the bottom it says, be ye thankful, all the beautiful things, love it, love it, love it. But I am just doing that center sunflower motif, doing all the call for DMC. I have my 24 needle apparently just hanging out. <laughs> I got the vase done. And I love it. That beautiful. I got the purple. Got a bit of the green coming in. I am loving this piece so much. I have enough fabric that I think I could add the other cartouches or the BE thankful on the bottom if I wanted to. We'll see. I've got time. I love it. I love it so much. Um, I had a couple questions again about this. This is the back issue of cross stitch and country crafts. I had a couple people asking what the cover looks like. This is the cover of this issue. And it is also, this pattern is also featured in the 101 best designs 
from Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. I will have the link below. I am letting you know that the price has gone up and this is the book it looks as of like this week the book was trending for over fifty dollars now look and see if your local library might have it if you can put a hold on it for when things open back up and libraries open back up again if you want to phone a friend see if you can borrow a copy if you want to throw down that cash that <laughs> you can do that too. It's a beautiful design. And I guess you can rationalize it by saying, well, there's 101 designs in the book. 50 bucks, that's 50 cents a design. So, hey, <laughs> I don't know. I the, the, the word to describe me is frugal. Frugal. We're going to go with frugal. Okay. All of that to lead up to Bouquet of Sunshine. I mentioned last week that I was particularly drawn to the piece because my I got when I got married, I got married and I wore a purple dress, not a white dress, but a purple dress. And I held a bouquet of sunflowers. And several of you said, show us photographic evidence of this, Amanda May. So I grabbed a picture and that's my, that's my love. And here I am, it's strapless. I swear it's purple. It's not coming across in the light. Fun fact, we got married on the hottest day of the year, record high, we got married. We got married in a, the backyard of our um, of, of a family member in Virginia, and the morning of it was just projected to be super duper hot. And oh, I'm done talking about <laughs> my projects, by the way. <laughs> okay, all right. So the the morning of our family member watered the lawn um, because she was afraid of the grass dying because we were having an outdoor ceremony. Well, it comes comes to time for the ceremony, the officiants there, everything. It's so hot. My husband is in a wool suit. It is heat index 118 degrees, 118, 118 degrees. He is in a wool suit. I am wearing heels, okay? Not wedges, heels. We're just molting. My makeup ran off my face. So by the time... The ceremony, I have no makeup on. <laughs> he is sweating buckets. Then the air conditioning inside the house broke mid ceremony. Like, so there's no heat. The cake melted. The backyard had been flooded because she overwatered. So during the opening prayer, I fell. They were praying. And my foot, because I was wearing heels in grass in the backyard, my cut and I fell tumbled backwards. So the reason you probably can't see the whole picture of me, like the whole dress view, is because it's wet and wrinkled because I fell in the wet grass. To say that my wedding was memorable would be an understatement. We started on time. We were done. Everyone ate melted cake. We were out there and under an hour, everyone was out of that house because, well, obviously there was no, <laughs> there was no air conditioning. So that is the story of how I got married in my purple dress. <laughs> I feel like it should be an episode of television. <laughs> well, it's an episode of Floss Tube, so we'll, we'll take that. I also want, yes, I want to do a quick shout out uh, to Sulky of America because they released my video series for all of you longtime viewers. I did a recorded a welcome to cross stitch intro to cross stitch video series last March, last April, last year, 2019. I recorded a video series for them and they just released it. it. So I put on a playlist, I don't know where on screen you're seeing this. 
I have a playlist on my channel now. It's called Tutorials by Amanda May of Arts Design or just Tutorials by Artist Design. And you can go and watch my intro to cross stitch video series if you are so inclined or pass it to a friend if they are thinking about cross stitching and haven't tried it yet. I will say that there are 11 episodes, not 10. I had to go over that. <laughs> Mind you, Sulky asked for five episodes and they had enough material for 11 episodes by the end of it. <laughs> anyway, If you have are a seasoned stitcher, if you've been stitching for any length of time, I'm sure the videos will not interest you in the slightest. But if you are new to cross stitching, you want some tips and tricks, or you want to pass along the information to a friend, you can you can uh, shoot them my playlist or go right to Sulky. They have a YouTube page and watch the videos from there. Again, this my video right here is not sponsored by them. I just want to let you know that that that. That project has come to fruition and it exists and it's exciting. I have a snoring pug over here. You saw wedding photos. You see my prairie schooler fairies. I got a question about these. These fairies I believe are back in print. Um, you can have your local needlework shop ask about them. Uh, prairie fairy, they were originally released like in 1994, 1995. This piece here is the complimentary chart by Marjorie Massey if you purchase something from Kitten Stitcher's website. These up here are, these three pictures here are not cross stitch. I was gifted them last year from a dear friend. Uh, this piece right here was stitched in 1979 and it features the Jefferson Memorial um, during cherry blossom seasons. I got this at a thrift store. This up here has hollyhocks, one of my favorite flowers in the button pack. I think it's special somethings. I have one of their charts to do with the corresponding button. And then hanging right there is my first ever exchange piece from Sassy Jack Stitchery. I did an exchange this year. I sent in my Plum Street stocking and my partner, I got this and it's gorgeous. This right here, this piece and all of its beautifulness is also a thrift store find. One of the ladies at one of the local little shops know, knew how much I love cross stitch. And so she saved that for me and asked if I wanted it. I was like, yes, how much is it? It is, it's a, a pattern designed by Kingsland, Kingsland, all one word. It is not in print anymore, but you can probably find it. It is quilt shop number five. I think I've got, oh, and then spring boobies right here on a toilet paper roll. That is my complimentary design that I have available at artistdesign.com for the hashtag um, stitch and be well. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here, you all. Thank you so much for joining me again. If you are new, I so appreciate you. If you are returning, you are so awesome. I hope that you have a beautiful week of stitching. If you are planning on doing your May stitching, I commend you and I will be watching. <laughs> I will be watching and digesting all of it, whether you're doing the Lindy stitches method or the traditional method, or if you're paving your own path forward on May or just stitching because you love it. I hope you have a beautiful week of stitching. Just know that I love you. I appreciate you. Your stitching matters and you matter. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.